Hi, this is Stephen Mance coming to you from Avenue I. Today we're going to show you some very special plants that are outside of one of the buildings here. And we're very excited to bring these to you on our channel. So now here's my friend David Rosenfeld to tell you about what we're going to show you. Hi, I'm David and this is Vera. And Vera has done a wonderful job with a group of people hey, Vera. Uh, doing gardening throughout a building complex, right? A building, a complex of three buildings. And we're here to take a tour and to learn a little bit about the history of the gardening that was done here. So, okay. sure. So, so you want to tell us about these plants again? It's very well, interesting what you're telling yeah, us. Yeah, so these plants were um, dug up from the building across the street that really didn't need them. And um, they were taking up too much room. They were growing into the building. And um, since we share the gardener, um, he put these plants, he moved these plants to over here. Um, they were about one-tenth the size they are now when he moved them. And he, in return, he, wherever he dug up plants from here, he would, if, if he thought they were appropriate, he would move to that building across the street. Very for cool. The Pebble Garden. And can you tell us, what's the name of the plants? So this is an oak leaf hydrangea. Oak leaf hydrangea. Oak leaf hydrangea. So it's a hydrangea and it, the lo leaf resembles an oak That's leaf. Right. It isn't an actual That's oak, right. obviously. Yeah, yeah no, it's an it's a, Wow. It's a and what made you want to move these plants in particular? In particular, so one of the things about plants is that they need to be good for the spot that they're in. And this is a plant that really requires no sun at all. Um, it can live in the sun and it can thrive in the sun, but it's happy sun, no sun. From wow. Sun, from sun to no sun. So okay. This is an area that doesn't get much sun, or we thought it wasn't going to get much sun. Now that that elm tree which is right behind you, is dying. The sun situation is changing in this courtyard. Right, and so okay. And eventually, a lot of the plants that are here might be getting too much sun, and um, we'll be able to plant plants in here that can use more sun. Very um, cool. So, And that's mm -hmm. something that happens in gardening all the time. Is, you mm -hmm. know, when trees are uh, either growing and making, and then there's less sun, or trees are dying and then there's more sun. And so um, we have to adjust it. For example, these plants that we put in on either side of this walkway mm -hmm. um, against the building were all supposed to be shade plants. And um, now that we see that this tree is dying, and we put them in this year because up until this year, this tree didn't look so, uh, so sparse. Um, but now that it's not looking so good, we, we, we're, we know that we're going to probably have to move some of these plants to another area. Wow, neat. So tell me first about the oak leaf hydrangeas, but then I want to hear about these other plants you plant. So the, were you, we, did you plant the original oak leaf hydrangeas, or they were just here and you just moved some of them? No, they were across. The, they were in, the, in front of the building across the street, and I can point them out to you. Actually, you can see... If you, Fine. Yeah, if you look over there where the building has that indentation... Right. Okay, if you look down to the ground... Mm -hmm. And you look at what's growing there. Right, I see it. Hydrangeas. Where the windows turn in, right. All right, so before we go over there, how about, since you planted these, maybe give us a little tour of your garden here. Well, these are shade-loving plants. Um, wow. Some of them are um, actually last all winter and don't lose their leaves. These hellebores. Don't Which ones? Hellebores. These are hellebores. Hellebores. <laughs> okay. They flower in March and April. Um, some of them even flower in February, and they stay green all winter. Um, cool. And, uh, and then there's this, these plants called the Riope, which is a ground cover, which is going to get to be much bigger than it is. It also lasts all winter with its right. leaves on. David, what are the ones you planted? Are they similar to these? We planted all of these. Wow, neat. From here, before we planted them, there was just hedges growing along here. Wow, we okay. Took the hedges out because the hedges are not doing well. They're actually wow. dying. Um, Do they need more sun or something? They have a disease. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. But I just want to ask David one thing. So the plants you've planted, are they under similar conditions? Well, actually, as long as you mention that, I'll just bring that over to segue to something that Vera was mentioning to me before okay. we started. And that, and then correct me if I'm wrong, but standard landscaping companies, some we have to wait for the train. Yeah, fine. It's the acoustics. Typical it's Brooklyn acoustics. Okay. Originally, Vera was saying that a standard landscaping company put down the landscaping in the general area and didn't, without necessarily 
uh, keeping in mind the conditions that the, each plant needed, required. And they were put in and a lot of the plants died. So what they've, what they've done is they, as they're putting down the plants now, they're doing it with an eye toward the, the actual conditions, the amount of shade, the type of soil, moisture and so on. So that, that the, chance, the plants have a better chance of surviving than a general landscaping situation did. So we're, in that sense, we're trying to do that the same thing in our gardens. We put down plants that we know will survive in those types of environments. Fine. Yeah. So that's a big deal, right, in an urban environment, of course. Okay, so keep showing us this. This is very okay. interesting. So um, there are this, this, these shrubs, that, these two shrubs are evergreen. They'll be here all winter. And then the rest of them, the leaves are going to, some of them will remain evergreen. I'm not exactly sure about each one of these, which the, um, these are called eucalyptus, and some of them right. kind of keep, they keep some of these are eucalyptus, and some of them do keep their leaves during the winter time. I think it, de it might depend on how severe the winter is, um, how cold it gets. Oh, can, um, oh so some yeah. last the winter and some don't, depending on the conditions. Right, and, and also depending on the particular type of, of um, plant. Um, Neat. This is another plant that keeps its leaves all winter. This is a ground cover. It's called wow. epimedium. So what do you do during the winter or during the colder months to maintain this garden and keep the plants going? During the winter, we don't really have to do much except pick up garbage. Oh, okay, that, fine. That the wind blows in. <laughs> oh, gotcha. So when the growing season starts, what do you do to help the plants flourish? Uh, we make sure that the watering system is working. Um, until the watering, it doesn't get, it's turned off for the winter time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's turned on in April. Wow. Um, and so we make sure that if we need water during, you know, uh, right. the beginning of spring and, and even earlier than that, we, we, we water it by Terrific. Are there any nutrients yeah. for any particular plants here? Any particular things you do for specific individual plants to keep them growing? We have, so we collect, comp we co collect the leaves. Oh. And we have a compost area in the back of one of the buildings in the co-op. Mm -hmm. And um, there's somebody, I can show you the compost bins, the bins that we set up. You That'd be great. Have, you also have mulch here. We have mulch. mulch. The, the mulch keeps in the moisture. It Perfect. keeps in the moisture and it keeps out the weeds. Okay. Mm -hmm. but as we walk along here, feel free to tell us about some of these other nice. plants we have here. What, are the, what is this one? This one is beautiful with the red veins. Yeah, now this is an annual that gets, um, this is actually, it's from last year, and the um, gardener, Stephen, has a place where he, at the end of the gardening season, at the end of, I'm not sure which month, he takes them back out of the ground, and he keeps them in a place that is um, somewhat heated, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure what the exact circumstances are, but they're not, they're not as vulnerable there, and he, um, uh, keeps them over the winter and then he repots them and brings them to his various clients. So Very neat. I think in the month of June is when they can get planted. Yeah. Wow. Did you want to get up there? Yeah. Okay, let's... Well,